listeners, and welcome back to La Cancha. Spring is in the air. It's April. It's warm outside of North America. You can go outside. You can see the birds chirping, things going on. We've had a long international break, so I've been able to notice the subtle changes in weather, doing other things to occupy my free time while Spain has been losing to Scotland. Uh, yeah, it's been weird, right, Oscar? Mm. Yeah, it's been... Honestly, I can't say Scotland beating Spain was too surprising because... That trio they had against Norway was a lie. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I don't know why, but seeing them lose kind of made me feel vindicated in a sort of way, even though I don't really care. Uh, it's about it's so, about Luis Enrique, isn't it? Not exactly him, but <laughs> no. You see, there's a subsection of the Liga Twitter. That say Barcelona players are overrated and they're the reason why Spain doesn't do anything. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, a coach picked a lot of La Liga players. I'm like, let's see how they do. And I'm not saying the players are obviously very good. Yeah. There's a lot of quality in there. Yeah. But if we're being real, yeah, like Jose who's starting for the national team, <laughs> isn't it? But isn't isn't that more symptomatic of? the depth of quality in the Spain line since, in, in like 10 years now, since that would be, uh, we haven't had a proper nine for the Spanish national team. Like Still. a high quality nine, when you compare France as Mbappe, Moane, England as... Uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, that, that's one problem Spain have, a lack of like, a, they have good players there. Yeah. Some very good players, but no like talisman, so to speak. Yeah. The one person you could have thought would be the talisman is Ansu Fati, but sadly injury has derailed his progress. I mean, I'd still hope he'd be a talisman for us and Spain, but I'm yeah. not really holding my breath anymore. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about him because he, he did some good things this weekend. But I want to push back on your Barcelona point because a point I want to say is that, for example, I feel Gavi was pushed in too early. I know he's obviously a very talented player. He's a good player. But when you look at the fact that you have a guy like Gabri Vega, who's possibly the next best thing in Spanish football after Gabi Pedri and, and his next crop of talents, he has the stats to prove that with nine goals and four assists. And he didn't get selected, but Gabi got selected so early. And I think that's part of the uh, the stress when Luis Enrique was there because a lot of Barcelona players got selected. And the same thing would happen if they were Celta Vigo players or Sevilla players. That, my friend, is sadly the disadvantage of not playing at a so-called elite cup. I mean, it's, I agree with you there, like, it's kind of not fair, but then that's the sad reality. Yeah, because even someone like Sanchez, I know he hasn't been great so recently, but like, he has really good stats to justify him being, justify him being part of the national team or mm-hmm. part of the setup. But yeah, like I, I do think that that's the big issue with Spain. The problem is they really lack that out and out goal scorer, either as centrally or on the wings, and they're not going to win many trophies without that because you can't you can you can win games through great midfield, but you need really good finishers, and yeah. I, I think that's what's going to hurt Spain going forward. Yeah, I just hope. I mean, I hope for Antares and Fati. Div- get like get better for the sake of Barcelona, but by consequence, it will help Spain if they improve. You know, yeah, obviously yeah. you have Pedri, Gavi there. You see, a Pedri, Gavi, Zubimendi midfield trio would be a real dream to watch yeah, for a club. Not the bro. You've been, you've been managing been, this like, year. Like I was like against Scotland when I saw Rod, he didn't give Zubinendi a chance. I'm like, you know what? I'm not watching. I hope you lose. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that really was a weird lineup. But speaking about Asifati and Lewandowski, they finally they finally found the net in 2023, which is something weird, especially for Lewandowski. But it, it's only LK, right? It, it, still. It's only LK, yeah. But still. <laughs> It's in these kind of games that you have to trash your opposition. And lately, we've been finding a way to win games that we should easily be winning just 1-0. So I was glad that 4-0 Barcelona was back this weekend. 
<laughs> yeah, it was really I the great thing was, you know, if despite the injuries, you know, Javi tried some experiments that worked. You know, all of the front three scored that had good games. Um some of the midfield that had good games were able to rest people. So all in all, a very positive outcome. Yeah, very positive outcome, especially when you consider the fact that there's there's a small game happening on Wednesday. I, I don't know what it is. Oh, um, El Clasico it, 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 part yeah, three. Yeah, part, oh, part four, no? This year? Uh, let's not remove the Super Cup. Like, <laughs> the, no, no, no. I mean, like, in terms of a trilogy, in terms of uh, the whole month of, like, one month plus of action. Yeah. And, and what did you think of Elche and the new coach, uh, Sebastian? Like a yeah, I thought honestly he should have won manager of the week. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, no, no, no. That, obviously, that should be Pachet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just aside. I mean, in the first half, even though they could have possibly considered a couple more than they should than they did, I thought they were pretty organized. I mean, it's always going to be a tough ask being the bottom team facing the top team when. The gap between the top and bottom is like historic. Yeah. <laughs> so it was always going to be a challenge. I mean, when you have things like um, Carmona being one on one and pulling up with a hamstring injury, and then I think Fidel or Peremi are slipping on the same part of the pitch, it just shows you mm-hmm. that LJ are seriously done for in terms of luck. And well, I didn't necessarily agree with sucking my chin because I'm like, by December or by the World Cup break, you should have done that you guys that are not staying up. So why not build towards the future? Yeah. So I hope they don't sack this guy and they give him the chance to express himself. Yeah. Yeah, going back to Barcelona though, Eric Garcia played as a DM in this game. Xavi said that it was it was Jordi Kirk's idea. Do you agree with Jordi Kirk that Eric Garcia if he has a future in Barcelona, it's in that DM position? So I see here you heard the crush say that took my Zubimendi dream took a huge blow. <laughs> I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me I mean I don't mind Busquets being there next season. But you're telling me instead of having a proper substitute for him, it's going to be Eric Garcia there. Now <laughs> if when you look at it, Eric Garcia has the tools to actually succeed there. It's just in Eric Garcia's own words, after the game, he was like, it was more tiring playing there because playing as a center, central, center defender, you don't have to run around as much as yeah. playing as a center, but as a defensive midfielder, where you have to press, you know, run around a bit, try and plug holes more than you do at center back. So, I mean, we'll have to see how this experiment develops in the long term. Yeah. And, we have to remember, Eric Garcia is 22, I think, or he, maybe he hasn't even hit 22. So he can still very well have a feature at centre-back. Yeah. <laughs> or but, you could do the reverse Mascherano. Yeah, but right now, if I'm being clearly honest, I'd rather not... If he plays, I'd rather not see my centre-back <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. Yeah, and and who who do you put in the lineup for? Oh, Alonso, easy. Al- Alonso is centre back for the big yeah. game. He did it against Real Madrid in the cup. Although to be fair, that day we kind of sat deep, so I don't know how that's going to work on Wednesday. Yeah, but, but <laughs> in... wouldn't it be better if Roberto plays right back and we have a centre back there? Like, <laughs> in there now, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're telling me you want Sergio Roberto to? St- I mean, I love Roberto, right? He gets a lot of criticism, but he doesn't. <laughs> no, the last time we tried that, we considered three, and we we need to like not lose to them by more than two goals or by more than one goal. So, no, no. Actually, speaking of that, speaking of the game, I'm kind of worried because. You know, the young and the young was really, really good in the league classic in the last two classicals. So I don't know. I feel I'm going to have to grind out. On that. <laughs> I'm going to have to put on the CBOD hat and grind out a deal. deal. No, no. 
I don't know. Just just for League Barcelona, there, there are rumors that Lionel Messi wants to come back. Obviously, he's being booed in at PSG. Uh, do you, sportsingly, I don't think it's the right decision for Barcelona, but I know emotions play a part in football. What From a sporting perspective, if Rafinha keeps you know developing, the belly comes back. You know, Fatih and Fern are still young. We don't need him. From the emotional perspective, I'm not surprised. It will sur- it may surprise you to hear it, but if he doesn't come back, I'll be pretty fine. I, I mean, if he comes, it will be a pleasant surprise. But I'd rather we invest whatever resources we're going to invest in this summer in other positions like Supi Mendy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Barcelona won big this weekend, but Real Madrid also won really big this weekend. And Benzema, Benzema scored a hat-trick, seven-minute hat-trick. He nearly doubled his tally of goals, of non-penalty goals in this game. Uh, really fantastic from Real Madrid. They played really well. They scored lots of goals. By the lead, they were they were a mess. We'll get onto them later. But with this Real Madrid firepower, how does this threaten Barcelona? Well, well, I mean, seeing you know, now before the international break, we've talked. I talked about how like maybe a normal international break might reset some things that have been happening. Like maybe some players that were playing bad before will start playing well again. Yeah. That sort of thing. Well, seeing. Although it's against Sergio Asenjo, seeing Benzema score a hat trick is kind of. It's more worrying if you're a Chelsea fan, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's not. It's not really something you want to see. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I, I, to talk about Real Madrid, right? The formation they played on yesterday was very interesting. It was a four-two-three-one, and yeah. essentially. They played all. Rodrigo was the ten sometimes. Asensio was the ten. They, you know, Real Madrid barely is a right winger anyway. So yeah. they were just like overloading Real Madrid's weird formation in that way. Now the question is: Does Ancelotti use this formation on Wednesday, or does he go for the tried, tested, and true four midfielders? What do you think he's going to do? I, I think he might go for the four midfielders. <laughs> That's why <laughs> I I think well well the issue is that we've gotten away with winning against these guys with so many absentees twice in a row. I don't think we're going to get off third time lucky. <laughs> I'm like the no the young is a seriously huge blow. So well we, there's a situation where we could go down and maybe Fatih and Fern can do something from the bench. Because yeah. it might be a very open game, especially if he makes the kind of changes where he brings on Rodrigo and Asensio and Chouamini in the second half. Yeah. yeah, but you know so, what? If, if, if I'm Ancelotti, right? Mm-hmm. I, I go with the same formation as the Valladolid game. Maybe we replace him Cabajal for Lucas Vasquez. I'll keep Modric on the bench, but I, I will I will use him in case like in case of emergencies and we need mm-hmm. to break stuff. Yeah, because but, you, you have to go for Barcelona right from the get go. Mm-hmm. I feel because I think the mistake he made in the last Clasico is that he was too late in going for Barcelona. Yeah. Because when he, when he did that and Real Madrid had the freedom mm-hmm. to attack Barcelona, yeah. they were closer to winning it than Barcelona at the end. Yeah. Although Barcelona really played well in mm-hmm. the previous Clasico. Yeah, but the thing with that is playing an attacking formation from the start and changing to an attacking formation within the game are two different things. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if Barcelona know that's coming, they'll be better prepared for it. If it happens in game and Xavi is too late to address something, then you know we can have. I mean, we have to remember since he was a shoulder offside yeah. from, so that's how tight things really got last time. So yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that Valverde didn't start, didn't start, didn't come at all. Modric didn't. I think he's going yeah. to go for. The old guard. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so too. I think so. I'll, I'll counter your, the point that you just made, and I'll mm-hmm. counter it with this. I feel in a game like this where it's 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 a final, pretty much. I know mm-hmm. it's a semi-final, but use this fact it's a final for the Roman. Mm-hmm. 
they need to win and you have to go right for me you can't you can be tactical and you can be like oh we're going to be conservative and we're going to see what mm-hmm. happens yeah but you're you're bloody real madrid you should go for it right from the get-go you should try to yeah. score goals and like yeah. ensure your your biggest rivals have no way coming back from yeah. the time i think we've talked about two different approaches they can use the yeah. four midfielders or the four attackers so they could easily go for a more balanced approach where they just start Rodrigo for once mm-hmm. and put Valverde in midfield and yeah that's an, that's another <laughs> that, 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 I mean that's the more balanced thing to do if you're thinking okay yeah they need to they need to they need to score two goals to go through and hope we don't score any sure and the good thing with Valverde though is that he sometimes he plays almost as an auxiliary right winger and mm-hmm. he, and you can maybe like with a four two three one, if you're playing Valverde on the right rather than Asensio, he maybe provides that defensive cover that Asensio might not actually cover. Yeah, and that's a better way of attacking Barcelona. And if you have a speed, he has the same things with Asensio in terms of scoring long shot goals. So, I think I think we're both agreeing that Rodrigo needs to start in this game. Yeah, and... he's he's the real problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's it's not really Vinny. Like, but, but, if yeah. Arabo is fit, he can win three out of five deals against Vinny or come out uh, do a lot better than I don't think he's going to completely shut him down this time like he did at the Bernabeu but yeah. it will be it will be like the league game where it was close Rodrigo is the real problem yeah. now yeah. Rodrigo against Alonso potentially is, is something to worry me as I remember Rashford versus Alonso but <laughs> well, if Real Madrid do make it to the final, I'll be like, well, you've been playing with so many people injured, it's only inevitable that it will come to bite us in the ass at some point. Yeah, yeah, it will. But let's talk about Vidalid, quote Vidalid, it was the end for Paquette, and honestly, they've been awful for a while, like, yeah. right before the World Cup ended, it started, my bad, and then they got then they got Kyle Lahren in, and he started scoring goals, but I don't. I don't think they've been a good team. Uh, like that's why I'm not so worried about the Valencia situation because I'm like, you know, by the way, they're not. They're not that great. Yeah, which real bad. It's kind of funny because for the first twenty minutes, they were actually putting Madrid under pressure and making the home fans anxious. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, the space of 10, 15 minutes just changes that. But yeah, even Kyle Lahren, right? When I saw Pacheta did basically what Gracia Plaza did last year, <laughs> where he rests a bunch of important players, basically giving up the game, saying, I'm not going to get anything from the Bernabeu, but hey, guys, be brave. And yeah. we got the exact same score. Like, <laughs> yeah, we did. And and it, it's like it's like a guy who's like, oh, I'm not going to do so much work tomorrow today because I'm going to give my full effort tomorrow. And he gets sacked. <laughs> Because it was yeah. so bad. Yeah, I mean, sacking because of this game is kind of a knee check reaction, though. No, but I, I think it's the games previously. Like, he was so close to the edge before he got that Valencia win. I remember yeah. they, had, they hadn't scored in five games. They hadn't won sure. in five. Then do it in, during the international break so you can, like, be smarter about this Ronaldo. Yeah. <laughs> sacking the manager ex- immediately after the international break is probably one of the most stupid things. Like, a like team can do because you had two weeks to get rid of him and maybe try and get some stability in yeah. with a new guy. That is true, but we're we're seeing a lot of clubs do that. One in <laughs> one special club in London that Real Madrid is going to play, and one special <laughs> club in Barcelona that that we'll get onto later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, it's it's bad luck for Vida lead, but things are looking good for Atletico and. And El Correa, was it? Do you think it meant that goal, or do you think that was a lot of luck played a role? The only luck involved was the fact that Pedzela's ricochet came straight to Correa. Other than that, it was a really beautiful goal. Yeah, it really was. And I thought this game, it had a level of tension towards it. It might not have been like the most like free flowing clashes, but I thought it was, it was a good game in that Betis, they came there to defend, but counter attack. And it was almost like they caught up Leti by surprise in their approach because they possibly expected Betis to go to go for the win, to go for the victory. And Betis, they haven't really done well at Metropolitano. 
But going into this game, maybe what changed Betts' approach was Canales because he was got suspended for four games, which if I say what I feel about this on, on air, I, I wouldn't be allowed. I'll be fired from all places. So, But it, it was a really shocking decision. Four games for what he said. Honestly, in this league, I'm just tired. <laughs> like, okay, you know the really petty part on the on these people's part. The guy was injured for like a month. <laughs> it's like they waited for him to be fit again. They're like, hey, remember what he said to Lahoz? Yeah. Yes, the suspect. <laughs> you know what? It was so long ago. I didn't remember what game he got sent off in. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this just feels petty and targeted. Yeah. Yeah, which year, what Sevilla, the punch that Sevilla got. <laughs> uh, but but going back, to, let's go back to the game. And what do you feel about Real Betis and how they performed in this one? Well, they were certainly trying to play like a long game of like trying to get a point from this. And you can understand that when one of your best, arguably your best player is not around. Yeah. And they had a couple of half chances actually to maybe snatch something. Yeah, but in the end, yeah, but the one I'm really really talking about that Miranda one that he should have at least put on target. True. But um, you know, at the end of the day, Atleti's quality from the bench is what won them the game. Yeah, it really was. And they they've been like the thing with Atleti right now is that they, they've sort of made La Liga boring for themselves because they don't really have a Champions League race, realistically. Like, I think I think after this, it's almost mm-hmm. certain because they have a nine-point lead over Betis. They have the head-to-head advantage over Betis. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can catch Real Madrid. Maybe that's the motivation for the squad. But at this moment, it's like they're sort of like coasting it. And I think it's good for them because they've gone through a lot of stress throughout the season. And right now, they remind me of the Atleti, and I said this earlier this year, like they're playing like the Atleti, not of, not the one that won the title a couple of years ago, but the Atleti from the first in the NA era, like when it first came in from 2012 to 2014. And that, yes, they do have a defensive mindset, but they're a lot more offensive in terms of the way they play the game. Like in terms of XG, they had more than, I think almost twice as much as Betis had in this game, although Betis were more defensive. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing them play a more expansive style of play, a more beautiful style of play in a sense that's suited towards them and that's like more towards their identity in a way. I mean, yeah, they really... I mean, it's a shame from their point of view because their best moment of the season is coming when they're out of Europe, out of the cup, you know. Yeah. And like you said, there's we did practically 10 points cap <laughs> There's really nothing to play for. No. The only, the only slight motivation is trying to catch Real Madrid, which they may or may not do, depending on how seriously Real Madrid puts their eggs into La Liga. Yeah. Which I guess we might not see. We might see a lot of rotations after this game against Barcelona, because Chelsea's coming up for Real Madrid, mm-hmm. and so. But you know what? I'll, I'll say like credit to them. I don't know how this form is going to translate to next season, but it does look like a more recognizable Atleti, and mm-hmm. um, and they, they don't seem to have too many weaknesses. I can't wait to see Barca Atleti in, in a couple of weeks. I think that will be a fascinating game. Like Both teams have nothing to play for, so I think... We still have to play. Works. We still have to make sure... I mean, we've seen crazy teams happen. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's over, man. It's over. <laughs> wait, I just... If Real Madrid drop any points next week, then I'll, I'll admit it's over. But till then, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. A, they they can possibly have head to head advantage against us if it comes to that. Yeah, yeah, but it'll, it'll take a, an almighty like collapse from Barcelona. But may, maybe that's what will happen if they lose their they lose their concentration and and they th- think it's over. But I don't know. I, I think I think I think we can call it now. <laughs> Give it a couple more matches. Okay, we will. But what about the top four race, though? Because Betis lost, but the Areal, they won against Ralph Sociedad. And Ralph Sociedad, they, they, they might be in danger of actually finishing sixth right now because 
at first we were thinking, can they push Real Madrid for second? But now it's like, <laughs> will they even be in the top four? Yeah, the, the problem Real Sociedad really have is, like, they're doing, like, they get into the penalty area in a way that's, like, really good to see and really effective. But they just don't, in the final third, they're a worse team than Villarreal. <laughs> And that, and that's saying something because you saw the chance that Morales had and he just skied it over. Yeah, I mean, Villarreal also have their problems. Well, before I said Villarreal would definitely not get top four because they were in Conference League and they'd have an out in the squad is as deep as it should be because of injuries. But now that you know they've um, they're out of the Conference League funny but yeah. now, now that they just have the league I think they can make the top four is pretty interesting and out of the three teams I they mean have the they right. have the momentum out of the three teams right now winning two games in a row yeah but they're they also pretty inconsistent so I don't know yeah I, I feel like, I also felt like this in this game right like you know, as a case where the, there was nothing between the two teams and, like, the first goal would, like, decide it. Yeah. So, Real Sociedad hit the post and then Villarreal got a penalty. I don't think the universe will, will be talking about how there's no top for us. <laughs> yeah, and Setien should go. <laughs> and Setien should. I mean, he still should go. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it would be, like, a curse in disguise if they get top four and Kike Setien goes to... Fernando Roche and is like, I got you top four, give me a new contract. Mm. Setien in the Champions League is going to trigger some memories. Right? <laughs> uh, well, let, let, let's see, let's see. I mean, they they have the head to head on Russell's head now, but they need to be super consistent. That's the team. That's the team of Villarreal. Any of these three teams, if they're consistent, they'll get top four. But none of them are consistent. But in terms of the top four, I think it's just between these three teams because everyone else is just far away. <laughs> oh man, yeah. But speaking of Setien, did you see that incident with Lochelso? We, I think Lochelso had a bracelet on, and Setien just like yanked it off him because <laughs> they didn't want to allow it. I didn't say that. I was tra- watching the game while getting a haircut, so I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, but but there's a funny story with Luke Chelsea, right? right? Mm-hmm. And it has something to do with the play in La Liga. So, apparently, Papu Gomez put a hex on Luke Chelsea. It, it what? Use Juju. Witchcraft. Yeah, he used witchcraft. <laughs> no joke. What? In, in Argentina, that's what they say. He, he used witchcraft at Lachelso to get him injured so he could get a space in the World Cup. <laughs> so I'm thinking Lachelso is using the bracelet to protect himself. <laughs> so it's not just the Paul Bar brothers that do this. <laughs> <laughs> no. no we're, we're trying to think of it. You're like, okay, there, there could be some sense in that because like, there's no way Papa would have gotten in if Lachelso was there. So. Of course, then. Well, maybe Pap would have gotten over Tiago Amada or something. Well, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. I'm, I'm not condoning <laughs> anything, by the way. I just have to put that out there. Yeah. Yeah. But another, another like interesting part about this game is poor Jackson. He had a game to remember because he scored the goal. He, he actually finished as well, which I'm surprised because like, that's one thing you can criticize him about. And mm-hmm. then he gets himself sent off. <laughs> Yeah, really, really funny set of events. Yeah. It's kind, it's kind of like, yeah, like this was a chance to build momentum, and we just ruined it. So now, let's say Morales plays against Real Madrid and scores a couple of goals. Yeah, it adds you out of the starting eleven again for a while. Yeah, especially given the fact that Setien didn't really rate him. But let's mm-hmm. move on. Let's talk about the race for seventh, the non-existent race for seventh, because none of them, like, from if you could look from seventh down to like the eleventh or twelfth, no one picked up any wins this weekend. But I'm going to start with Athletic. Uh, Sunset, he got a massive contract, a nine-year contract, and the way he announced it was quite special, wasn't it? Yeah, like after the game, 
I'm announcing to the fans. I, I, I was I was wondering, I'm like, what's going on? Like, are they going to like give a promise to like come back in the Copa de Rey semi final or something? I'm like, it's just one nil, you know, it's not that deep. But then yeah. <laughs> and he had the contract and something. I'm like, oh, that's really good. And you know, it just goes to show you how much Basque players love their big contracts. Yeah. Uh, like, I think Mount Cayola at Osasuna is currently on a 10 year contract. Yeah. These are crazy numbers, man. But hey, yeah. Yeah. You get, you've got, he's gotten job security. I know, I know. I remember when Saul got a 10 year or 8 year contract to Atleti. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh, wow, that's incredible for, for Atleti. But like, you, looking at him now, I'm just like, Wow, that's amazing job security for Sal. <laughs> exactly. That, that's the ultimate goal in life, job security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. But but the one thing we, we're sure about in this game and in the Asuna game is that neither team wanted to win either game. Yeah, like they just played. They just <laughs> massively irritated. Also, when it comes to Asuna, I noticed the trend of bass teams just not be able to score to save their <laughs> lives right now. Yeah, it's, it's like all the bass. I guess for us to die, we had that moment in January, but since February, like uh, all the bass teams have just been really poor. Like mm-hmm. also sooner, if you look at their form, their form card, apart from the, the Sevilla game, they've just been like draws, loss, draw, loss. Yeah, Atlantic actually, at San Mames in particular, that's where the problem is. Away from home, they're actually doing all right. At San Mames, do they? They barely score there anymore, and <laughs> even when they score, they don't score enough to win. Yeah. So, so do you think they'll have enough firepower to get over us sooner? Well, when you have to, when you bear in mind that they basically forfeited this game in a way for that game, I think they'll come out with everything. But in that game, if Munyain does not start with Sunset, I don't know about it. Valverde definitely has a problem with him because he needs to like go all in and overwhelm us as soon as, with as many chances as possible because you know in Yaki Williams is going to waste like two or three good <laughs> ones. So you need to keep the conveyor belt moving. Yeah, somehow they need to find a, a Basque person or or, or a regular a regular player with like a Basque grandfather or was like I spent like one month in the Basque country and like hey this guy's Basque yeah. <laughs> because I, I don't see how how well they're gonna solve it because I haven't seen any like young really good Basque strikers coming through the ranks but no it's, it's mostly midfielders these days yeah but we can give Guruseta like he maybe he, his first season in La Liga is not done too bad so mm-hmm. hopefully improves but I'm I'm really um excited for both Copa del Rey semifinals. I think it's finely balanced and it's going to be fireworks in both games, hopefully. Yeah. Mm, hopefully the two teams that are winning will be in the final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's true. I, I guess the worst final possible will be Barca Athletic because we've seen it so many You've times. Seen it. Well, from my point of view, we Real Madrid us as soon because there's a Actually, Real Madrid being that final is just a bad team, period. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I think those Real Madrid Arsenal will be kind of cool because Arsenal they've never really been there. And they're over, As, like, yeah. As, As soon as being the final will be cool, period. Though. Yeah. If they win, that would be great to see too. Yeah, I think last time Arsenal was there was 2005. Yeah, better speed there. Yeah, Barca, Barca Athletic will be overkill. Real Madrid Athletic, I'm not sure. Like that, that'll be interesting. But I think it will be half tough field to blow the house down yeah. again. <laughs> again, and, and then Benzema is just scoring. Like no, that will just enrage me beyond belief. So yeah, we need to do our job on Wednesday, and whoever wins on Tuesday, you know, make sure. If we get there, we do our job too. And hopefully, yeah. Pedro will be available for that. And yeah, then... not... Just to make a point, the annoying part of our Real Madrid since like Zidane's second era is that before Real Madrid, like they start the game off pretty well, and mm-hmm. it's four five zero, so they don't give you that hope. But yeah. since yeah. twenty seventeen, it's like they give you the hope and they just snatch it away from you at the end. It's so it's, annoying. It's I'm like, I wasted nineteen minutes of my life <laughs> just for this. Yeah, like, given the classical last month, right, when I said she was in the second minute, I was so angry. <laughs> I, 
I was about to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, someone told me, wait, so I still check in VAR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, it can be very frustrating. So, you know what? If Real Madrid are going to make it to the final, at least don't give me the hope. Just <laughs> deal with us in the first 30 minutes so I can go and swim or something. True, true. True. But let, let's move on to South. Uh, no, it's Rio. We need to talk about the cafe. Yeah, no. Should we talk about the cafe? And there's nothing to talk about. Exactly. Uh, NSU you now is four goals away from Lewandowski. That's the only thing that we can talk about. With Man that. is not three goals behind him. Thanks to his super <laughs> to pass that party session. <laughs> uh, at least the golden boot race is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's something we can look forward to. Uh, for, from Valencia's point of view, this was, this was a very decent game in the second half. I, I really enjoyed the game. There was a lot of tension from there. But did you see the first goal that Ryan scored? Yeah, I saw it. Uh, the the what? There right? were two people free in the box. <laughs> how does how does Comensania have that much space? That's I, I was not thinking it was Cameo at first, but my Comensania really came all the way from holding midfield <laughs> and could have set up camp in Valencia's penalty box. That was just yeah, and and the space and time to turn to take your shot. He took that... enough time. He could have. Started playing Fortnite there or something. <laughs> like, that was yeah. just shoddy defending. Yeah. And, and at that point, Rayo, they were seventh in the table, seven. But they haven't been, they haven't been that consistent recently. I don't think yeah, they've, they've not won a game since the start of February. Which is quite, it's quite concerning. But when you figure mm-hmm. that they have 35 points, you think that. They're on the beach at this point. It's, it's the same thing last day, I think. The mid-season Real Sociedad collapse is also the same thing as the mid-season <laughs> right. Um Let's not call it a collapse. Let's call it a hands of the bike. Have yeah. Hands of the pedal. Yeah. <laughs> Where you yeah. just don't swim points onto the face by Stone. Yeah, they're taking a nap. But next season, next week they're playing Atleti, so that, that might be quite exciting for them. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. For Valencia, though, I, I, I'm happy with the fact that they finish games very well. But I'm slightly worried with the start that Valencia, they started starting games quite poorly. Like they yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, from my point of view, right, you can tell that this team has the capability to survive, but then there are moments <laughs> of like a serious, like it's just a serious lack of quality sometimes. And if other teams start getting their act together, Valencia might be in trouble. Yeah. That said, we have established that some other teams don't look like they're able to get their act together. Uh, yeah, it's like, you know, you have some players. Remember that 3 0 win against Betis where Guillermo was just bowling and yeah. you know, expecting a call up to the World Cup squad? Today, you know, he got whistled off by Mestaya, and that kind of tells you how Valencia have largely trended. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't been great since um since the start of New Year, mm-hmm. and I and I think the the issue though is that the goals like Valencia were very high scoring at the start, mm-hmm. but since since literally since the since the World Cup, it's the goals have dried up for Valencia, and there's a problem there up top, whether it's Cavani, whether it's Duro, whether it's um Marcos Andre, there doesn't seem to be that that many goals out there, so. Mm-hmm. It's something definitely new that Baraja needs to sort out because there, there is a lot of chances being created by Valencia. Oh, there are lots of chances being created by Valencia, but I, I don't. I think you're right in that there's that quality up front that's lacking. And let's say Valencia had a striker yeah. like Larin, Abaidolid, or yeah. NSU now, I feel it will be a completely different yeah. story, and we'll be talking about a team in mid table, even in midfield, right? Like. Yeah, I think Almeida side Yus Musa's kind of. I mean, he look he he played well when he came on, but Yus Musa has largely been on a downturn since the start of the year. Moriba has had one or two good moments here and there, and Nico has been injured. Jamon has been awful too. I just I just thought during the game, like, what if Valencia just commit to four four two and just have Castillo, Lino, Quivert, and Cavani on the pitch at once. Like, yeah. if the I, midfield, the midfield is not good enough to dominate 
mid tip or fellow like relegation struggles unless they want to intentionally sit back. So yeah. why not just play a more expansive kind of game? Yeah, like like if you move it to four two three one or if you play Clybert as a forward, which I think he would do really well in. I think that that would be really great for Valencia because he has that speed and tenacity that mm-hmm. a lot of people a lot of people might lack. Yeah. And playing him alongside Cavani or Marcus Andre will be will be good. Mm. But yeah, you're you're right, you're right, you're really spot on in that. Like the midfield too needs a lot of work. But yeah. but we'll see, because like the good thing for Valencia point of view is that Armaria is the next opponent. Armaria they, they actually did really well against us, I felt. Um, given that this, they're not really a side that travels well, but they scored early, they made a couple of mistakes for Celta's goal, and against Celta, Celta is like they're on fire right now. So to get a point at Balaidos is a really big boost for Almeria. Yeah. Well, we're talking about seven spots, right? I feel like yeah, the way things are going, if Athletic. Don't return to the start of the season athletic after the cup final, whatever the result is. I think Celta have a really good chance to get seventh. Granted, they're, they're still not exactly safe. No. Damn. Well, like I said before, when you get to 40 points, I think you're safe <laughs> at this point. So, yeah, um, they're like five points away. I think Celta will be safe, and if they can. Really like keep up this momentum and get a European place. I think that would be neat. The problem with Celta is that the management is kind of bad too. So <laughs> I don't know if that would be a good thing long term. Yeah, the, the thing though is that um, it, it is managed by uh, like the sport directors, Luc, uh, Luis Campos, who's, who's done really good things in Lille, mm-hmm. in Monaco, but they are going to sell Gabri Vega, it seems, in the summer. They're going to get 40 million euros for him, which I, I think it should, be, it should be more. Man. It, it really should be more, like given the fact that Jude Bellingham is going for 120. And if you look at their stats, like they're quite similar for what they're doing. Obviously, mm-hmm. Bellingham is doing it at a higher level for a much bigger club than Celta. But I feel for, for a guy like this who's going to be the next star, he should be going for 60 or 70 million. But that hindsight even, is 2020. Even then, even then, like. I don't think someone as young as he is, even though he's doing extremely well, should just leave now. Like, yeah, I feel but, like Klo- Klopp should be smarter and just mm-hmm. wait. Like, see how he does in the second season. Let him develop more. You know. Yeah, <laughs> like like a certain Ukrainian player right now in struggling. In, in, exactly. In, like or... <laughs> the step the step up to from fighting the relegation race to play for a top four, top six team is huge. Yeah. And not is. every young player is able to I mean you've seen some players come from the second division to the first division and do very yeah, well. Like but, Pedri. But exactly but the thing is you have to the Barcelona creates an environment where young players can try. So if you're a young player and you're playing rubbish like Ricky Pooch yeah. <laughs> you have to look at yourself. Yeah. And the clubs that are being lit with Gabi Vega, honestly, that's not the environment for him. Yeah, I, I think going to Real Madrid right now will be a mistake. Going to Real Madrid right now will be as big as a mistake as going to the like so-called 16. Big 16. Because you're not going to play that much. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll say the best thing maybe for his career and for his future club's career is if someone buys him and loans him back to Celso for two years. That will be the best thing. That, that's him. actually a really good to like... Everyone is too hasty to get the next best team, but with the, it's not, this are lots of careers are ruined by money. Oh, of course, of course. Because mm-hmm. the thing, though, is I feel in some way, deep at the back of their mind, maybe Celta, what they're desperate to sell him. Because 40 million, he'll be Celta's highest sell in their history. Mm-hmm. And with that, with that amount of money, they can buy, they can build the squad, and they can be a stronger team if they get into Europe. But... Uh, a team that I would really like to see him go to if they, but that's dependent on if they sell Ozzyman and they get like the 170. I, I sort of broke it Napoli because I think they'll do really well with him. He can really like, it's, it'll be. Yeah, that, that's, as, a, like, that, that's, that's not a, to- that's a less toxic environment where yeah. no one's going to call me a flop after one minute of football. 
Yeah, and they really did really well with Fabian and how they made him develop. So I think that will be good for for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's let's come back to La Liga. And so you're saying that Celta like they have this chance for seven, but with Almeria, based on what you saw on Saturday, do you think they're on, or do you think they have a strong chance of staying up? Let's see with Almeria. Almeria look to me like. If I compare them to Valencia, I think they have more goals in them than Valencia. The issue is yeah. that they concede way more than Valencia. So I don't really know what... The simple fact is that Almeria need to win an away game. <laughs> like, it would be a huge feat if they get stay up without winning a single away game. But definitely the fact that he concedes so many is a problem. Yeah. And yeah. the fact, I mean, like you said... Valencia are playing Almeria this weekend. I believe it's at Almeria Stadium. Yeah. Okay. That's a huge, huge, huge game. And a draw, honestly, is not going to benefit them. I didn't even think a draw was that beneficial to Valencia today. Yeah. But, you know, it, when, when the alternative is a defeat, you have to take the draw. Yeah, you definitely have to. And Ruby is, is watching over his shoulders, seeing the fact that Pacheta has been sacked. And yeah. Diego Martinez got sacked after after Stuani ended him. He ended the myth of Diego Martinez, and it's it's been very disappointing from Diego Martinez at Espanol because when he first came in, we all had high hopes for him. We saw what he did with Granada. We expected something similar at Espanol, but it just never worked. Yeah, at all. Like I actually said, well, with hindsight, I said if they kept RDT with. Um, um, Costa they have enough goals to keep them like high mid table, but that Espanol's problem is not really goal scoring because not just Hacedo is scoring a lot of goals, Bradway is having a good, really good season. Yeah, that there is plenty in midfield, but these guys can not defend. <laughs> <laughs> Like they made Girona's defense look somewhat competent, and we know Girona are allergic to defend it, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, I feel like the defenders, the goalkeepers have just been a huge letdown. Even though Espanyol have even got in Pacheco, who's like really good in La Liga, like it doesn't, it hasn't really changed anything. No, it hasn't really. And then when you have guys like Sergio Gomez, who does things like that, or gets sent off, makes mistakes, like you're, you're always going to have a chance against Espanyol. But in a sending off, I, I sort of blame the referee and not him because. I'm not sure if you saw the sequence before where it's like the referee sort of buddy checks or like gets in the way of Cuado, the ball goes away. At that point, the referee should stop the game. But yeah, he he should, that he should, he should have. Yeah, he doesn't. And then Sergio like, Gomez, cri like criminal tackle, <laughs> which he deserves to go to the street for. But the referee didn't stop the game. And uh, Espanol, they're in the trouble they're in right now. They hired. I believe his name is Luis Garcia, who was a former player of Espanol, won the Copa del Rey with them. And, you, uh, you know, when I heard Luis Garcia, I thought it was <laughs> Luis Garcia Plaza from Mallorca of last <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, but I feel like that signing, I felt, I, I felt like if that's the case, it's just another case of other guy that was just recycling the same crap. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know anything about these guys my jail career like it won't surprise me to learn that he's never managed a team before but you know yeah it looks, he looks charismatic <laughs> yeah it looks charismatic he was formerly at Real Madrid C um he's a former player obviously but he has no experience with um La Liga football somewhat like Baraja and so I think Espanol like Valencia they're just relying on nostalgia and hoping that works <laughs> yeah well I don't know. It's kind of like, there's so many teams down here that I'm like, it would just be a shame to see them go down, especially given how, how high hopes, what high hopes we had of them. Yeah. But Girona, they're completely like, they're the opposite in that we didn't really have that much hope that they'll survive. And right now, given the fact that Rayo and everyone else in that top seven race, they, they can't seem to I, get their food on the ground. They're, they're yeah. close. Yeah, you're, you're, you're actually right. They have 34. Yeah. You know, like, most of this season has been a lot of teams separated by just two points in the bottom half. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now we're getting this congregation of teams in mid for seven spots. So realistically, your drill that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a lot of things could happen if Barcelona or Real Madrid win the Copa del Rey. Sure, that, that is very true. If if either of them win it, even Euro Sevilla might be possible. Don't say that loudly. <laughs> nah. they're, they're six points away from Athletic. And uh, uh, Sevilla is a different case from Drina. Sevilla have to worry about what's down this tell what's up <laughs> first. <laughs> that that is very true. But when Dilibar came in, we're seeing a lot of the four two three one revolution happening because he used that same formation, mm-hmm. and things were more were more settled for Sevilla. It was more direct. Yeah. That it got. Yeah, it was a pretty because Sevilla have suffered this season from just. Being so slow on the ball, but they were with with an MND by team. You know, that's not the case. You know, you're going to get a lot of high intensity plays and everything. I just think that you know, is this Sevilla squad really equipped for high intensity football? Some some players look like it. Some players, I still have my doubts. But in any case, you know, they, I don't think that would be a problem for. The short term, the short term, you just have to win, no matter how, and they were able to win. Yeah, I think given the the lineup that he played, like they're very good for that that sort of football, and especially when you consider the fact that Tecatito has to come in and everything. But you're right in that a lot of players like Lamela, like Papu, they might not be equipped for that sort of football, and some of the older players, but. I do, I do think maybe that's what Sevilla need because they've gone towards that tiki taka sort of football for the past five or six years. While it's had some sort of success with Lopetegui and San Paoli in this first thing, I, I don't really think the fans really warmed up to that sort of football. They like the more direct approach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on Cadiz, uh, this was their first loss at home since the Barcelona game. And I, I do think it's a really big result for Sevilla, this one. Yeah. Because away from home, you beat one of your rivals, you get the crucial head-to-head. This this is a big, big three points. And yeah. And really bad for Cadiz. Yeah, it's really bad for Cadiz. Well, but Sevilla are doing what they have to do. They're beating all of the teams that are direct competitors with them. Yes, they're getting humiliated by teams that are <laughs> out there pretty good for the most part, but... You know, after that loss against Atafi, getting this result is really huge. Yeah, it really is. And do you, like, Manchester United is on the horizon. They go to Old Trafford. United, they've not been on the greatest of form recently, domestically. Do you see any chance of them putting up a better fight than Real Betis did? Mandeleva is going to cut your European team. That, that's crazy. The thought of it is kind of crazy. I mean, it's not offen- It's not off. It's, it's just crazy. It's not offensively yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. like, like say, like, um, Gracia Plaza or something. <laughs> like, to defer to Mandeleva, I know on the group chat, I was like, oh, Mandeleva got his last two teams relegated. But this is a guy who, when he was at A bar, he made them a mid-table team, like a very good mid-table team. Mm-hmm. They never had to worry about relegation until their last season. And that was just like a decline in quality over and mm-hmm. over again. And mm-hmm. Alaves, their relegation had been coming for a very long time. It was just like yeah. he was the manager to, to oversee it. Mm-hmm. So that's like with him, I, I think he might be slightly underrated as a manager and given the way he plays football, how intense his teams are. And Maybe this is his last chance to show that he is a good manager in, in, the, in the Spanish league. Who knows? Yeah. And personally, I don't see this as a long term appointment, but maybe they do in the Europa League. I won't really hold my breath over that. And <laughs> if we're being real, yeah. it's better they actually get knocked out of the Europa League and focus on staying up. Yeah. No, it is, but like this is a club that their main identity is the Europa League. The same way Real Madrid. When when they when they weren't when they weren't in the bottom half of the table. Yes, yeah, that is true. <laughs> That's true, but who knows? And I, I think I, I have I missed out any of the clubs. I think I've done everything right. 
we missed out on Tafe, but it, it's a tough yeah, um, Osasuna and Mayaka. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Not, nothing, absolutely nothing happened in that no, game. No, it, it was one of those game days where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do something with my Friday and not watch this game because I know yeah. if I watch it. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, looking uh, at the two managers, the two teams, I'm like, this is a 0-0. Yeah, exactly. I'm, like, I'm like, the fact that Osasuna can't score goals right now, the fact that it's Mallorca away from home. <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, it was Mallorca at home, but Mariota still, home, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I, I just left it. I just left it on so I could like observe whatever happens while I'm, I'm playing video games. Like, nothing really happened. Nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. There were a bunch of sackers. I, I, I just want to talk about. I know it's been a while since we talked about other leagues, but the Bundesliga. I had high hopes for for sure Dortmund, but my God, you did, didn't you? I, I did. I did. It was it was really high. First 12 minutes, I was like, you know what? They're going to prove everyone right. I'm going to, like, rub it in tap space. I'm like, this is what I should have believed. But then they did the Dortmund. Yeah, I mean, every time Dortmund gave a pretense of a title, so though this time wasn't really a pretense. They yeah, actually... They're still in there somewhere. Yeah. But, you know, you there you notice, okay, a classic carry is around the corner. This is the chance to, you know, do something on the... Well, it it is still just two points difference. Yeah, so they could still goalkeeper very well win the league. But when a goalkeeper makes that sort of mistake, how how do you expect that? that? That's the Dortmund team. <laughs> From yeah. Weidenfeller to I keep forgetting on their goalkeepers, man. Right? But well, a lot of them. Berkey. <laughs> Ber- Ber- yeah, Berkey can just have some silly errors in well. They can still win the league, but I hope they don't because I don't want to face Bayern again next season. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Bayern, Thomas Tuchel is the new manager after sacking Julio. Oh yeah, and I, I remember seeing that and I was like, "This is this is stupid." Yeah. <laughs> Why are you sacking Nagelsmann? Like, yeah. with with Nagelsmann, right? I'm like, the chance for them to win the Champions League is there. I know Tuchel has gotten to two Champions League finals and won one, but. Tukil's approach to games is different from Nagelsmann. Uh, yeah. At least, even though Saki Nagelsmann was stupid, they did this before the international break on like some other clubs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and the thing though is like with Tukil is like his record is obviously very impressive. But let's spare a word for Paul Nagelsmann who got sacked during a skiing trip with his girlfriend. His girlfriend <laughs> broke up with him after that. He lost mm. his dream job. It's been, it's been a tough topic for him, and now it's been for Tottenham. That's rough, but yeah, that's, that's even worse. worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I think I don't know where he should really go, to be honest. And I, I don't. I, I mean, it's not going to. It's not di- di- directly affecting me, but. He is somewhat linked with the Real Madrid job if Carlo Ancelotti doesn't win a title this year. Hmm. That would be, be an yeah, I saw that that would be an interesting appointment for Real Madrid for once instead of re, re, reboot re, re, <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of that term? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Like, uh, yeah, Zidane is also linked with the Real Madrid job. Of course. <laughs> The only Madrid manager I know that's not going to come back is Mourinho because he's so toxic and he's, <laughs> and he's finished at the top level. Yeah, and poor Luis Enrique, he has to go and manage Chelsea. That one, I'm like, bro, if you go there, I just... <laughs> like, I think Chelsea's current interim coach is Bruno Salto or something. He's like oh, yeah. a former Brighton rights back. I'm like, okay, so... Yeah. Chelsea's transfer strategy or appointment strategy is basically Brighton. Whatever Brighton have done, we'll do it. <laughs> Apparently, Spain, Spain has like as more manage like Spanish. There are more Spanish managers in England in top flight than English managers in any other country. Apparently, yeah, there's, there's like Arteta, I think it, Emery, it's Pep, Pep uh, Lopetegui. Yeah, Javi Garcia is there. Yeah, yeah, it's Leeds, man. Who is he in Leeds? Have a graph there. Damn, I've been out of the blue for eight coast of the Leeds. 
I can yeah. barely keep up with La Liga these days. But yeah, huh? <laughs> that, that's why you have, that's why you have me. It's a partnership, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But anyways, with that, um, we hope you guys enjoyed our conversation. We, we didn't talk. We didn't more. finish talking about England. Oh yeah, true. Chelsea oh. and Liverpool. Oh man. <laughs> the <laughs> but, I, I mean, like I said with Chelsea, if you are a Chelsea fan and you see Benzema score a hat trick, you're, <laughs> you're not going to have a good night, a good nice rest anytime soon. <laughs> and then Liverpool, I just. Uh, and Manchester United, I know they lost. It's just one loss, but I just, I'm going to quote someone from Twitter. You can't fool me forever. <laughs> but yeah. I just look at my head and go on these runs. And I'm like, I've seen this before. <laughs> I've seen this before. Well, yeah, yeah. They, they should be able to. The only real threat for the top four is Tottenham. So they yeah. should be. Well, so, what's the second manager? Which is, yeah, lots they sack Conte. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they should. They yeah, you, you really have been out to lose, bro. No, I knew, I remember his comments. I'm like, okay, they're definitely going to sack. Okay, no wonder Nagzuma has been into who's their current manager now. Yeah, that that's a nice structure for me. <laughs> let, let me let me take a look at who was on the bench with them this weekend. Oh, while we're on the topic, another team that just a banter team right now. <laughs> PSG. Oh man. Yeah, it's it's they've allowed the league title race in France come back somehow. I mean, it's six points. I want you to. Yeah, but the the next up there for PSG, they're playing Nice. I'm surprised they lost to Lyon because Lyon they've been trash this season and mm-hmm. they're going yeah, especially at home. Yeah, and in 2023, um, top uh, was I said top. I'm sorry, PSG have won only 44 percent of their games this year. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't know why they've not started Galtier yet. <laughs> yeah, Galtier is another one that like everyone was like super. I was super excited about him. I'm mm-hmm. not going to put everyone into that category, and uh, I'm shocked that he's as bad as Pochettino and the other PSG managers in Liga. Because I thought like, okay, this is a guy who's won Liga with Lille. He's done really well with some other teams, and he, he's going to really kill this league. Like they're going to win it with like hundred plus points, and you no. Know, I mean, the thing with the thing with PSG is that you have like the obvious obvious superstars up front, but the rest of the team, quite truthfully, is kind of average. Yeah, Luis Campos, uh, he <laughs> he destroyed them from within. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Tottenham's um, current interim manager is a guy I've never heard of before. So yeah. Yeah. But we thought now, I think they should just get Pochettino back. Pochettino. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wonder why they sacked him because he overperformed so much for that team. Yeah, though. he overperformed so much. Then. Like, is, is, is there any reason why people take them? He's, yeah, the, the, that's, he's the only reason, really, because to be honest, that last his last season where you could theoretically say was his. You could look at it saying, okay, they got a Champions League final, it's their best season, but. They were actually terrible in the second half of like they went from being a three horse race to looking over their shoulder at top four and the only reason they got top four is because Arsenal lost three games in three days and my United were just <laughs> my United. So yeah, I feel like I do I do feel like he has he, he should kinda of finish the job at Tottenham, man. Right? That's like a more reasonable appointment than Nagel's man. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does really seem like that. I guess the only country we haven't mentioned is Italy. Uh, and, yeah, uh yeah, true. Yeah, Napoli. Juventus, Juventus are somehow back in the title race. Um, not title race. My bad. Tough race. race. Yeah. And Napoli got launched by Milan four zero. But yeah, the game that really matters is in two weeks when Napoli and Milan face each other again. Oh yeah, in the Champions, the Champions League. League. And they might be better again in the Coppa Italia and again in the Champions League. So we might see uh, a Hall of Famer between Napoli and Milan. Yeah, this guy's kind of like how Boston and Real Madrid have faced each other like what, <laughs> four or five times this year already. Yeah. And Inter, they're not looking so good. They're really not. 
And I don't I heard Osman is injured, right? I don't know how serious it is, but if you're Benfica, you even though you shouldn't think I head to semi final, but given that I think that Benfica are better than Inter right now and yeah. they're better than Milan right now. Yeah. If Napoli do manage to not get to the semi final then Benfica should really be licking their lips and Enzo Fernandez <laughs> will probably be We'll probably be crying in the nightclubs <laughs> in London saying, why did I make this move? Yeah. Actually, if, if the semi-final was Madrid, Bayern, and Benfica, Milan, that would be like such a classic. Exactly. It's, it's almost like you're in the 60s, you're in the 80s, you're in the mm-hmm. 90s. And it would be like historically, like that would be a big, big Champions League final, just a semi-final yeah. lineup. But I, I'm, that's my one I'll be looking forward to, but... Knowing how the football gods work, it will possibly be Chelsea City, Napoli, Inter Milan. Mm, Chelsea, Chelsea are not doing anything to Real Madrid right now. Like, yeah. the, two, the tools I simply don't care to work with. Oh, man. Yeah, but with, with that, I'm just going to end the podcast. Thank you so much for our discussion. It was really amazing to be back talking about club football after international break that snoozed and made me think more about the weather than anything else. Yeah. And Oscar, with that, I'm going to leave us off. Adios, listeners. Adios.